Yo, what is going on, guys? Jada Yumiko here, and today we're back with, I believe, part three. Well, technically part four if you include uh, the stream. We're in part three here, and I've just realized that I've been recording in a very weird format. It's for some reason, for some reason, I don't know why, but this game just prefers to be run in a, like a windowed version sort of thing. So whenever I try and record it, it makes it, it, I'm basically just recording like a small box that shows the game and then the rest of the screen is black. So uh, if my, the earlier videos were like low quality or anything, that's why. <laughs> and I really do apologize about that. Uh, if I could, I would totally go back and do it, but uh, do it all again. But obviously there's a lot that went into those. Uh, so... You know, I'm not going to stress out about it too much, but it is what it is, and we're going to continue today. What are you doing at my desk? I'm officially, I'm officially your mentor now. Congratulations! I never asked for this. Mr. CO did. Ignoring her, I sit down and open my laptop and try to wrap up what I left unfinished yesterday. I have to write technical documentation of the analysis program he Dong helped out with. I'm slowly starting to understand what the program does by simply inputting random numbers and running it hundreds of times. Hei Dong is bouncing up and down in her chair while on her phone. I assume she's texting Jay. How does she have so much energy? Her company isn't terrible, but I'm worried I won't finish my work today. What should I do? Tolerate her or I have a lot of work to do. I mean, we gotta get the job done, right? Hidong, I have a lot of work to do. She looks up from her phone. Well, why didn't you just say so? She grabs a laptop off my desk and gets to work. Five minutes later, she shows me her handiwork. An outline of technical details in complex terms. All I have to do is fill in the surrounding words. She has the gift of making me feel both relieved and useless all at once. Now that the hard part's over, I guess a little chit-chat won't hurt. Hey, 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 Dong. Hmm? Wanna chat? Alright, how do you finish work so quickly? How did you know? Let's see, how do you finish work so quickly? Oh, I'd like to tell you it's because I've been here so long that I'm just a genius. <laughs> In reality, things are just slow because that's the way it works. Red tape and waiting around for approvals. It's incredibly boring. Well, it's not so bad. The free time gives me a lot of time to think about stuff. About what? Oh, just stuff. You know? Dogs. Clothes. Dogs. Do you like dogs? Ugh. Hmm? Wanna chat? Alright, uh, how did you end up in the city? I was lucky enough to get a job here straight out of college. My family lives pretty far from here. But I'm glad I came because I met Jay. Plus, Kay's place was so cute I couldn't resist. Just because it's cute? So cute! Modern design is really cool. I... okay. And how's that working out so far? Hmm, I can't complain, right? I'm making the right choices in life, supposedly. Hmm. Um, uh, nothing to say. You're actually quite intriguing. I never knew. I wish I could say the same for you. <laughs> Just kidding. I got the feeling that while she wasn't unhappy, Hyedong wasn't entirely content with life. I guess I know that feeling too. Or rather... I knew. Because now I'm surrounded by a bunch of babes. Not again. I'm glad to see you too. Ugh, what do you want? Beer or liquor? Eh, uh, let's, let's, let's throw back a beer. I'll have a beer. You have some sense after all. We just got a new one. They say it has a, they say it has a good body. She slides the bottle across the counter. There's a pretty girl on this beer. Not every day you see that. So, Jay. What? I'm busy, you know. There's literally nobody else here. Ugh. So where are you from? I don't really know anything about you. What? What do you want to know? I'm learning about my new roommates. It's important information. In reality, teasing Jay is just too much fun. I don't want to share my details with a weird pervert like you. She crosses her arms and turns away in a huff. I already know. Already know what? 
about you? How you came out of nowhere one day and don't have a place to go back to? This is getting more personal than I expected. She's a ruthless. She shuffles some glasses around the, black, the back counter. I came out of nowhere too, I guess. Came from nothing is came from nothing is a better way to put it. I always wanted to live the big city dream, see the sights, meet new people. But I ended up working the bar, living with a handful of girls and a weirdo. What a life, huh? Hey, I resent that. Your bill is fifty dollars. What? That's ridiculous. It's the premium for asking weird questions. Boss. Jay. Wait, what did I give his voice last time? Ah, whatever. Jay, you're not allowed to hit the customers. Unless they pay for it, then I suppose we could. What? Alright, let's see. What do we get? Pinstripe. Is that Hey Dong? Damn. The hermit that longed for love. Day 13, baby. Let's go. Oh, hey, Yumiko, I forgot to tell you. The semester is ending in the next couple of days, so make sure you finish any work you still have lying around. I've only been here for, like, four days. How is this semester nearly over already? Oh, well, you know, the school board, they keep pushing for shorter semesters, and I don't think that's a good idea, you know? Back in my day when... How old are you exactly? A lady never tells. Anyway, as I was saying... Okay, okay, I'll get it done. Oh, and another thing. I need a skill evaluation, too. Paperwork is nice and all, but I need to make sure you've learned how to either play an instrument or sing or something like that. I have no doubt you can do it, but I need real proof. Maybe a short duet with Yuzhong with Yuzhong would be good. It's not totally fair to expect you to have a full semester, a full semester of skills yet, I suppose. Sure, I'll tell her. Let's just call her over. Yuzhong, dearie. Hmm. I was just telling Yumiko over here that we need to do some kind of evaluation. I think a duet would be good, don't you? Sure, I think that would be nice. Excellent! Here, uh, here are some sheets I think that would suit you two. She rustles around in her massive binders before eventually digging out a few sheets and handing them to Yuzhong. Yuzhong quickly scans the pages, nodding along. This looks fine. Shall we get started, Yumiko? Sure thing. Oh, you two are so precious. Ah, to be young again. You, you are young. Anyway. Nah, bro, Asian woman, I mean, like, just Asian people in general be looking just, like, way younger than they really are. So, this is a duet, which means we each get one side of the piano. I'll take the right side and you take the left? I think the higher notes are a little harder to read, so I'll handle that. Sure. Yuzhong sits on the bench. Come on, sit down. Oh, right. I take a seat on the bench next to her. I don't think it's too bad. Here, try this part. Starting from measure 5. Uh-huh. I think I'm starting to get it. I think we can get this down without a problem. Let's play a little together. I don't think I've ever sat this close to Yuzhong before. It's amazing how her eyes stay on the sheet music the entire time she's effortlessly moving her hands around the keys. I'm still relatively lost, but slowly picking it up. Good work! I think we've learned earned a little break, don't you think? Sure. She casually hums to herself while quietly paging through a nearby music book. Unlike most students, she doesn't take this time to find her friends or look at her phone. She's an outlier for sure. My curiosity gets the best of me, perhaps despite my best judgment. Yu Zhang. Hmm? What kind of person do you like? Wh what? I don't think I used the right words there. Um, um, I... I consider correcting myself, but she seems to be locked deep in thought about her answer. I guess kind, caring. Maybe I'm in good shape too. Maybe in good shape too. <laughs> I don't know. I just meant as friends, not romantically. Sorry, I'm not in good enough shape. That sounds nice. Oh. Oh man, I really want to go for Chang though. Like that's that's kind of who I'm shooting for right now. And I don't know, man. Like Jay, Jay's starting to grow on me as well. Oh, man, because Yu Zhang's like the nice girly type with like, I feel like she's a sort of uh, like shy but friendly one that hides her feelings. That's literally what she is. I meant just as friends, not romantically. I, I'm not necessarily going to say that. I'm not going to say that. Sorry, I'm not in good enough shape. I mean, f fair enough, right? <laughs> 
Uh, I feel like saying that sounds nice is just a little awkward. You know, let's, I, I'm assuming this has a, a, a sort of teasing tone, so I'm going to go for this. Sorry, I'm not in good enough shape. I'm just daydreaming. Don't get offended. It's just a joke. Let's get back to it. Try it from here? Sure. I scoot closer to reach the middle keys. Yu Zhang also moves away to give me more space. We make it through the song without terrible difficulty, although I've only used one hand so far. That was great. You did a really good job. Thanks. Well, why did I say it like that? <laughs> Thanks. This isn't too bad after all. Oh dear, it appears we've run out of charcoal for today's exercise. I didn't suppose any, any of you could share with the entire class. I'll need a few volunteers to run the local to run to the local art supplies store. The professor scans the room for candidates. Are they victims? I'd take the opportunity to leave class any day. <clears throat> Yumiko, you're the new student, I think. Perhaps this would be a good opportunity to get better acquainted with the city. Sh sure. Now, we'll need to send another student with you to make sure you don't lose your weight. Let's see. A pale hand lazily rises into the air. I volunteer. In this moment, the professor's expression resembles that of a weary parent whose child asks them, are we there yet, for the 14th time this hour. Miss Chang, I don't think it'd be a good idea. Teacher, I can go to the ba- Oh, teacher, can I go to the bathroom then? The professor removes his glasses with his right hand and sighs, massaging his temples with the left. Miss Hiori, would you kindly accompany Miss Chang and our new student? Hiori's head snaps to attention upon hearing her name. Do I have to? I'd like to get some work done. Miss Hiori, I trust you're responsible enough to cuddle these two back in time. Hiori exhales in a soft puff and places down her pencil. She diffidently she diffidently glances at Chang for a moment before her eyes meet mine. Lips pursed, her reluctance is written clear as day. As you wish. What? Are you trying to say you don't trust me, Professor? Hiori flashes an artificial smile before standing up and turning away, where her face where her face instantly reverts to a nearly imperci imperceptible imperceptible imperc <laughs> imperceptible frown. <laughs> Fuck, get read, bro. According to the professor, the mall isn't far from school. Perhaps a 15-minute walk. That is far. Proceeding along the main road, the shade from the sparse trees and tall buildings shield us from the hot sun. A balmy spring masquerading as summer. The world is awash in the bright rays overhead. Chang is sticking to the side of the road, strolling along in the shade of the trees. No doubt that baggy sweater is a little much for today's heat. Hiori strides ahead briskly, her long, thin legs covering large swaths of ground with every step. She presses on her arm she presses on with arms crossed, her high heels clicking rhythmically on the concrete. Always seeming to be preoccupied with her work, it's odd to see her out of her element. It would appear that she feels the same way. Meanwhile, Chang seems to be enjoying the sights, her eyes wandering from the city skyline to the clouds above. I increase my pace to catch up to Hyori, while Chang continues her laid-back amble. Sorry for making you come out here with me. Her expression softens as she turns towards me. It's not your fault, Yumiko. I'm just thinking about getting back to work. I... <laughs> yeah. I know you take your art very seriously. Her cheerful smiles make me smile makes me feel a bit more at ease. I don't think she's too upset after all. It's something that makes me happy. What about you, Yumiko? Does creating art make you happy? This is a much deeper question than I anticipated answering today. I think so. Yeah, I think it does. I'm glad. I hope you keep feeling that way. Th thanks. I look back at Chang, who is falling further and further behind as she continues at her own pace. Should we wait for Chang? Hiori discreetly rolls her eyes with the intensity of annoyance I have only ever seen from Chang. Despite her subdued and professional nature, it seems Hiori is a bit of an impatient streak. I suppose. What's the hurry? We're all getting to get there. We're all going to get there eventually. We can lock We can walk a little slower. Fuck you, Hiori. We can walk a little slower. Fine, I guess. Not like we're going to be late. Slowing our pace, we eventually arrive at the mall a few minutes behind schedule. Unlike last time, the mall is bustling with the constant chatter of conversation, despite the fact that it's the middle of the work week. And like every other mall in the world, this one smells like pretzels. 
There doesn't appear to be a pretzel shop anywhere in the vicinity, but still. Freshly baked pretzels. Somewhere. Shall we go directly to the art supply store? I'd like to get back to class on time. Chang has already wandered off in the opposite direction, seeming to have no intention of returning to Hyori. Following Chang. I should go wrangle Chang. I'd only slow you down anyway. Well, alright then. The disappointment Hyori's eyes partially masked by her heavy eyelashes. She pivots away from me and walks towards the art store, heels clicking away. Oh, Hyori, do you have the hots for me? Oh my gosh, I don't blame you. I'm like, I'm the stud of studs. <laughs> I feel a little bad for leaving her alone. Don't. We get to fucking be with Chang, dude. Before she gets too far, I run to catch up with Chang. Hey, where are you running off to? I'm just looking around. Why? Are you going to follow me here, too? We walk through the crowded corridor. I just noticed something, right? <laughs> I'm I'm, I'm really going for the girls that are, like, mean to me. <laughs> Jay and Chang, like... I don't know, man. Maybe, maybe I'm just a masochist. <laughs> we walk through the crowded corridors of the mall, taking in the fluorescent overhead lighting and the cries of a child of child and parent alike. The cyan tinted light strips give them all a premium feel to match the premium price tags. Maybe a little dated by current standards, but who am I to complain? Chang wanders about aimlessly, peering into windows and silently admiring the products inside. Shoes, handbags, beauty products. She takes a little bit of time to look at everything. I like those shoes, so buy them. It's okay, I'm just enjoying the sights. Is there anything in particular you came for? Why? Are you going to buy me something? Keep dreaming. <laughs> what kind of date is this, cheapskate? This isn't a date. Of course not. You think I'd date you? Hey. Jeez, calm down. You need to learn to take a joke or two. I'm just wondering if there's anything specific we're going. Oh, if there's anywhere specific we're going. She places her finger on her chin, considering her options. I don't have a destination in mind. We stroll along, dodging child strollers and aggressive watch salesmen alike. The second floor is more of the same. Chang seems uniquely interested in each storefront. Hey, I've been meaning to uh, Hey, I've been meaning to ask. Hmm? What is it? Why do you always sit so far from the rest of the class? <laughs> what a weird question out of nowhere. But I'm not like them. I don't really want to be. What does that mean? Chang continues without breaking stride, eyes forward. She rests her hands behind her head. I think artists are really full of themselves. They're always searching for validation and they heap praise upon themselves. I don't want to be like that. I'm not sure I understand it, but Chang quickly averts her gaze before I can inquire further. Ooh! Chang skips over to the pet store, where a gray and white kitten is perched in a pet bed. She crouches down and beckons the cat over its marble light green eyes entranced by her motions. It happily trots over her and gazes up at Chang. I think it wants you to pet it. What a cute thing. Come here, you. I've always liked cats. They're so cute, don't you think? Uh, yeah. I, I love cats too, Chang. What a coincidence, right? <laughs> the cat affectionately nuzzles with Chang as she makes kissy faces at it. I've never seen this side of her before. It really likes you. I heard animals are attracted to, Ugh. I heard animals are attracted to kind people. That must mean I'm a good person, right, Yumiko? Uh sure. <laughs> Looks like Chang made a friend today. Hell yeah. You two intentionally disobeyed me. And left Hyo to take care of everything for herself. What would we have done without her? And you, Yumiko. I think you should spend less time with Miss Chang before it begins to negatively affect your grades. The professor briskly takes his leave. I think that was the most coherent phrase he's ever uttered. Did you know he did you know he was even capable of speaking so directly? Chang casually picks up her bag and walks out the back door. I get the feeling she's not too torn up about being yelled at. I hastily pack up my supplies and jog out the door behind her. Chang! She responds without breaking stride once again. I gotta go somewhere. I know you're not going anywhere. You're just gonna go home, right? She stops. I run to catch up with her. I hate you. I wouldn't have it any other way. 
She strolls, she rolls her eyes and turns away to contain her laughter. Hey, are you blushing? No, shut up. Ah! Yes! Yes! Gah! Fuck yeah! Chang gang! Chang gang! Oh, yes. <laughs> Well, I guess I have I guess I have time to do some work now. Oh, you're still up. I recognize Kay's voice from behind me. Did you miss me? Uh, I. What are you working on anyway? Music theory notes? How studious of you. That's not fun for me either. Still, it takes a lot of discipline. That music teacher of yours must be very effective. What was her name again? Yuna. Yu Zhang. Tell you, Zhang, I'm glad she's giving you some structure in your life. In any case, I'm glad you're being productive. She must be motivating you. I think so, or I'm just doing it for myself. But I think... <laughs> oh, dude, Chang Gang, bro! But, I mean, like, you, Zhang, ain't even that bad. I mean... <sighs> I think so. Th that doesn't necessarily mean I lo I like like her, right? You know, like pfft, it could just be his friends, you know, just yeah, whatever, right? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Living here has been really good for you so far, huh? Maybe I should charge a rent premium for all the new skills you've learned. Hey, I'm just kidding. Calm down. She reaches over and casually ruffles my hair once again. You're doing well, Yumiko. I'm proud of you. I... I'm going to head to bed now. Don't work yourself too hard. I should say the same to you. Day 14. Good morning, friend. Why are you at my desk? I'm your mentor. Why do you keep forgetting? I was waiting for you, obviously. She looks back down at her phone. She appears to be playing mobile games. Have you finished your work yet today? I literally just got here. Well, get to work then! Ugh. I sit down and turn on my computer, opening the spreadsheets from the previous day. Work, work, work. Are you learning anything new? I think so. Maybe. She lifts her head up and rolls her chair over next to me. I can smell her floral perfume once again. I reflexively move back. You spelled your name wrong. What? Oh. Some of these numbers don't seem right. These cells aren't calculated correctly. She makes a few changes. I think you're right. Thanks. No problem. She's helped me out again. At this point, she just she just yeah she should just have both of our salaries. How did you end up at this job anyway? You're clearly overqualified. Mm, I never thought I'd be working an office job, honestly. I just studied hard, and one day I ended up here. I don't think I'm smart or anything. I think I've just been here long enough to know what's expected of me. I spent all my time growing up and focusing on other things. Now I'm working at a fancy company, and I have a lot of free time. I just never realized how boring things are. Office life? I don't know. Maybe I'm just not trying hard enough. I should be happy with what I have, I think. Still, things really are boring. There's still th fun things out there. I think there's still fun things to do out there. You think so? Yeah, I guess. I'm trying to find those things. We have to find them together. The two of us, partners in an unfamiliar city. How does that sound? It so sounds like a plan to me. Anyway. Hey, hey, have you gotten paid yet? Not yet. Payday's tomorrow, right? Yeah, let's go out for lunch tomorrow. Am I going to have to pay again? That depends. How much do you appreciate me? Not at... She smirks, gesturing at my spreadsheet. Ugh... Sure thing, my lovely mentor. Don't forget pretty. <laughs> uh. Won't be at work today, so don't go. <laughs> I don't want you to embarrass me while I'm gone. Even more reason to go if, me if the mean bartender isn't there. <laughs> oh, that's great. I wonder if it's a special occasion, should I ask? Where are you going instead? I feel like that might be a little bit too nosy. Let's... Oh, 
I feel like we should kind of nitpick though, right? I mean, where's the harm in asking, right? Where are you going instead? None of your business. Yeah, I figured that was that was probably uh <laughs> that was probably gonna be the response. Are you going to Jimmy's? Nah, I guess Jay isn't there today. Oh, I wonder if she's she stops to ponder her next words as if she accidentally revealed confidential information. Hmm. Never mind. What? I was thinking, maybe she's Nah. Oh, come on. You can't just be like that. Now you have to tell me. Fine, fine. I was thinking maybe she's seen the guy she likes. I hadn't thought of that, but Jadong might be onto something. wonder what they're doing. While I'm daydreaming, I catch a devious smirk appearing on Jadong's face. Do you want to go find her? See what's going on? <laughs> How would we even... Come with me. I have a feeling I know where, she, where we might find them. She grabs my hand and drags me away. H hey! Come on, what are you waiting for? It'll be fun. Her hand is surprisingly small. Small hand. Alright. We continue down the street in the opposite direction of Kay's house. I have no idea where Kay Dong is leading me. The streets remain unusually quiet for a city this big. The soft rumble of passing vehicles and the chirping of birds nearby create a peaceful ambience only amp amplified by the setting sun painting the world a golden yellow. Hey, hey, Dong. What? We're watching a sunset together. Isn't it romantic? Ha! <laughs> I hope this isn't your idea of a date. Expecting something a little fancier? She laughs. At least a little bit. After making her way down a few blocks, I can barely make out the figure of a short girl in the distance, leaning against the brick wall of a coffee shop. The sight of black pigtails in that fashion-forward outfit is unmistakable. Yep, it's Jay. Target acquired. What do you think? Should we make our present known or be sneaky about this? Being open about this is probably the less awkward route, but that does sound slightly less fun. Be a regular human. <laughs> I love that. I love these options. Be a regular human being and say hello or stealth. It's just stealth mode. We're going stealth mode, baby. Sneaking is the only way to go. I hop behind a nearby bush and take cover. Yedong holds both hands over her mouth to contain her laughter before following my lead. I can't believe you're actually doing this. Shh, she's gonna hear us. We wait patiently behind the bush, Yedong constantly snickering at the absurdity of the situation. Before long, a young black-haired man emerges from the coffee shop, holding a cup in each hand. What the? Yo, ready to go? I'm not gonna give him that voice. Yeah, ready to go? Oh, uh, um, yeah, I'm ready. Thanks for the coffee. They began to walk down the street together, Jay appearing to carry most of the conversation. Jay Dong motions me down the street, and we slowly began to walk in the same direction. The clicking of Jay Dong's white heels on the pavement seemed to draw Jay's attention. Jay Dong quickly hops into a nearby alley to evade Jay's sight, pulling me with her. Jay turns back around and continues walking. Psst, Yumiko, carry me. Wh what? My shoes are making too much noise. If you carry me, we'll move more quietly. Uh, alright. Good idea. She hops on my back. Would it just be easier for you to take off the heels? You're heavy. Ow. Okay, you're not heavy. We continue down the street like a bizarre circus troupe, keeping our distance behind Jay and her date. People are staring. <laughs> I wonder why. After a few blocks, my arms start... My arms are starting to feel like jelly from carrying Hyedong's weight. Hey, Yumiko, you're getting a little shaky down there. Getting tired? Come on, you can do it. She pats my shoulders to cheer me on, but it's only making my arms even more tired. I don't think I can hold on much longer. What are you going to do, drop me? Fuck. Oh, hey, Jay, what are you doing here? Jay's face turns bright crimson red, and for a moment I think I can see steam beginning to erupt from her ears. What are you guys doing? Ugh, name's Gray. Nice to meet y'all. So you followed me all the way here? And instead of just taking your shoes off, you decided to make this idiot Yumiko carry you all the way down the street? Oh, well, now that you mention it, that probably would have been a better idea. You're smart, Jay. So you're a rapper? He's one of the best. 
Uh, yeah. She helps me out with some songwriting sometimes. Jay smiles smugly. He points towards the record on the wall. Oh, I know that song. I always knew Jay was talented. How exciting. Anyway, I'm trying to get her a deal with the record company. We'll get it eventually. I'm going to step into the booth real quick, though. His videos have millions of views. What a stud. Do you get paid for this stuff, Jay? Jay looks at the ground and scratches her head. Uh, not yet. He said once we get the contract worked out... She shuffles her feet uncomfortably. I just wanted to contribute. I've been following him for a long time. How long are you going to do that for free? I don't judge your life. You literally can't judge my life. I work a well-paying job and live generally scrupulously. You, you also f oh, you also weirdly follow people around when, the, when they're on a date. How is this a date? It's just, is being with another person considered a date? Are you Minko and I on a date too? I don't know, maybe. I won't judge you if you are. And you'll hear it exasperated sounds. <laughs> I'm just glad nobody's yelling at me. Just, just forget it. I'm going to listen to Grey now. She plops into the comfy leather chair, grabs a pair of chunky studio headphones and puts them on, drowning us out. Uh, well, I guess this is the end of our misadventure. Want to go home? Yeah, I guess so. Looking back on the way out, Jay is gazing intently into the booth, hands over each earphone, as if in a trance. In that moment, it seemed like nothing else in the world existed other than the man in front of her. If love exists, what does it look like? Hmm. Ugh. Jay, you're being used, girl. Another morning, another one of Kay's new cooking adventures. She stares intently as I lift the fork towards my mouth. How's it this time? It's hard to eat while she's staring so intently. Hey, Yumiko, this is Yu Zhang. I'll be in the classroom a little early today if you want to join me. How did she even get my number? I guess I'm going to class now. What a good student. Have a nice day, Yumiko. She goes back to mixing her ingredients. I want more Kay. What kind of person is Kay? She's equal parts mysterious and openly goofy. I can't read her at all. Still, I have my own thoughts, I guess. I think I like her, I don't know, or she's not my type. Oh, man. Kay's like... a motherly type, you know? That's not necessarily not my type. Oh, man, but I feel like this is one of those deciding moments where it's like, if I say that I like her, then that'll kind of steer the story a bit. Which... Uh, I don't necessarily want to do that. Ugh. Alright, for now, we're, we're just going to keep it neutral. I don't know. I just don't know what conclusions to, to draw from them yet. In any case, I expected a house full of relative strangers to be awkward and full of drama, but there's been none of that. A calming presence, no matter how... Oh, a calming presence, no matter how I look at it. Let's try with both hands now. I think you can do it. Your faith is misguided. Come on now. My non-dominant hand doesn't really work that way. If my dominant hand is drunks on a train, my other hand is soup on a roller coaster. It's bad, but I'm making it through very slowly. Yijong nods along, allowing me to flounder as I correct my own mistakes. Her silent support is encouraging, as if she truly believes I'll be able to figure it out. It's a weird feeling having someone put faith in you. After a great deal of tripping and stumbling, I make it to the end. There's clearly a lot of work to be done in the next few days, but it's a real confidence booster to be able to play a piano piece from beginning to end without giving up. Yuzhan claps excitedly while I slump over the keyboard. You did it! I told you! Still needs work. Nobody gets it perfect on the first try. You probably could. M maybe That's besides the point. You're learning. Practice makes perfect. Let's try it again. I think you have the first half down, so let's start from page two. Starting, the, starting in the middle is awkward. If you really want to master it, you should be able to start from anywhere. Don't you think? Uh... Yuzhong! What is it? I got out of class early. And what do you want from me? Let's go get lunch! Dad's coming to pick us up. Her eyes flicker at the mention of her father. Dad? Why? 
He says the air conditioning at the office is on the fritz or something. She holds her gaze for a moment before looking back at the music sheets. I can't. I have to stay here. Why? I'm teaching, silly. Yuri furrows her, brow, furrows her brow and puffs her cheeks. Fine. Have fun, you two. <laughs> what is that supposed to mean? Don't worry about it. Bye, guys. She scampers off. Feeling awkward about the situation, I wonder if I should say something. Encourage her to go, ask about her family, or ignore it. I feel like it would be horrible to ask about, like... I, like, I get that my last decision, like, when I last decided to do something like this, I was very picky. But I feel like this is something I really shouldn't be too forward about. I feel like this is something she would need to open up to me about. I'm going to ignore it right now. Oh, uh, can you show me this part? I don't know how it's supposed to sound. Oh, right. Now where were we? Yeah, I don't want to push that. I feel a little guilty, like I'm just wasting her time. But it's it's nice to feel wanted. Even if it's just because I'm even if it's just because I'm someone's responsibility. Teacher, can I go to the bathroom? We've started spending nearly every class period together, sketching together outside, partially because the fresh spring air is a major improvement over a stuffy classroom, but partially because I'm able to learn a lot from Chang's abilities. Today is just another one of those days. The teacher doesn't seem to mind that one of his best students seems to sneak out every day. Chang continues to avoid the other students in our class, especially Hyori. She's never specifically mentioned her, but it's easy to sense the contempt whenever Hyori is uh, around. They're, they are pretty different after all. I'm watching Chang sketch her comics again, her hand effortlessly moving about the page, creating, a delicately, creating delicately drawn characters. It's a real sight to behold. Watching her, pro watching her process is far more interesting than anything I could create. I wonder what kind of comic she's making. I don't think I've ever asked about it. What are you staring at? You, obviously. Weirdo. Her barbs don't carry the same venomous bite they used to. I'm either used to it or she's warming up to me. I'm just looking at your comics. You should look at your own paper instead. I'm learning from you. <laughs> wow, I never thought I'd be a teacher. Dripping with sarcasm, of course. She sighs gently. It's not that important. I just like drawing comics because I want to make a full story someday. I think that would be fun. About what? I haven't thought that far ahead yet. A story full of continuous characters, places... Sounds interesting, don't you think? That describes most stories, I think. Screw you. You know what I meant. Drawing individual pieces, that's... Oh. Ugh, fuck. Drawing individual pieces, that's cool. You can hang them up on your wall, whatever. I want to make something that leads into another something, and someday I'll have a whole collection of somethings that I can look back on and smile. A good story involves characters that do a lot of things together. Characters you like, hoping they succeed. Am I an interesting character? Do people like me and hope I succeed? What a scary thought. But in the end, but in the end I understand what she's saying. Familiarity breeds contempt, or familiarity leads to affection. Familiarity breeds contempt, or familiarity leads to affection. Familiarity leads to affection. Oh, you finally get it. Stories can't overstay their welcome, though. I think that's the worst thing that can happen. I love Jake, bro. I love her. Ugh. That is such a beautiful line. And she's right. Stories cannot overstay their welcome. Teach that to the goddamn shonen anime industry, huh? People getting bored of your work? People getting tired of you? When well, they don't care what happens to you anymore? Rough. Well, what do you want your story to be about? I haven't thought that far ahead yet. I just draw some characters, some scenes, practicing. Maybe someday I'll figure it out. I have some character designs, but nothing concrete. I need to put some real thought into it. I'll help. She stops sketching and looks up at me. Wow. She smirks sarcastically. What would I have done without my hero Yumiko to save me? Now everything is solved. Uh, seriously though, I don't need anyone's help. Your drawings are definitely different from mine too. 
but thanks. <laughs> yes, boys! Yes, boys! We're in. We are in. Ready for lunch? I literally just got here. Yep, time for an early lunch. Why not? I need to work. Your mentor is telling you to take a lunch break. You've worked real hard. The spreadsheets can wait for a few minutes. Or a few hours. Even wait a day or two. Who's gonna check on you? Me? I... <sighs> Fine. Wait, hours? Days? Great! I know a good place. Let's go. Wait, how long are we gonna be, you know... Oh. You know what? Never mind. And why are you so obsessed with food? Food is one of the great pleasures in life. It needs to be cherished. I follow Hye Dong down the street, unsure of what we're doing, unsure of where we're going. There's a pronounced bounce in her step, as if she's going, as if going to a 9 a.m. Ugh. There's a pronounced bounce in her step, as if going to lunch at 9 a.m. is the most interesting thing she's done this year. You're awfully happy today, aren't I always? Especially today. The sun's shining, the birds are singing, I'm out of the office. What's not to love? You really do need some more interesting events in your life. I do! This is the start of that! A 9 a.m. lunch break. Yes! We'll build bigger and bigger and someday we'll go to the moon or something! Yeah, that sounds good. Glad we agree. Yesterday was a good start, even though the ending wasn't as exciting as I had hoped. Stalking our friend is your idea of fun? Well, when you put it that way, yeah, I'd say so. Where are we going anyway? Sun Cafe? I'm going to get a salad. Do you want anything? You're asking me if I want anything, even though I'm the one paying. I'm taking care of you. It's my duty as your superior. Ugh. Dang, hey Dong. Why did you get a salad? The sandwiches look pretty good. Hey Dong gazes aimlessly into her plastic bowl of leaves. I like food, but I also want to be thin. This way I can eat a lot, but without the calories. Ah, uh, I see. Kaedong's supermodel proportions suggest that she would be fairly attractive regardless, but I suppose it's not my place to say. So why'd you pick this place? I heard other people at work talk about it once, so I came here. I mean, it's a $10 salad, but it's a pretty good salad. Peering around the room, there are certainly many corporate drone types scampering in and out with their to-go breakfast orders. Clearly a popular destination given its proximity to the office. So Yumiko, hmm? You've asked me a lot of questions lately, but I realize that I don't know, that I don't know a single thing about you. What do you want to know? Uh, well, I didn't think that far ahead. She ponders while stuffing a fork full of lettuce in her mouth, cheeks inflating like that of a cartoon chipmunk. Let's start with an easy one. Where are you from? How'd you end up here? In reality, this isn't an easy one at all. All I know is Kay told me that we'd get a new new roommate. I want the rest of the details. Spill the beans. Do I tell her the truth and then risk sounding insane or make up a generic story? I feel like Hye Dong's the type of person who wouldn't really care about my very strange story of being mysteriously knocked out, waking up in an unfamiliar environment, and learning that my house has been burned down. Well... I picked up a phone on the street, answered a random call, and ended up here. My old apartment burned down while I was out, so this is where I live now. She stares at me dumbfounded as a single leaf of lettuce falls out of her mouth. That's crazy! I want to know more! Well, that's all. That's definitely not any ordinary circumstance. You're interesting, Yumiko. I'm glad you think so. It's cool! I've always wanted to hear something unique like that, even if it's not true. When you, but when you say it, I believe it. <laughs> Maybe I'm just gullible. I envy people with cool stories. I don't have any of those. You're a unique person, though. I hope that was a compliment. I had fun as a kid, but sometimes it got a little boring. And lonely, being an only child. I can't say I was unhappy, though. College came, I put my nose to the grindstone to lay my so-called dream job. And for the past three years, I've just sort of been floating around here. I just feel like I've been missing out on a lot, you know? Not getting any younger. Sympathize or joke with her. Let's... we're gonna sympathize. That must be tough. 
Eh, it's alright. I'm sure my problems are super minor compared to most of the girls. S still, I feel for you. Don't feel sorry for me. It's weird. So, what do you want in life, if you're so bored now? That's a tough question, especially this early in the morning. Maybe the vitamins in your salad will find you some nir nirvana or something. Yeah, all those anti antiox ugh. antioxidants. Antioxidants will make my brain function at a higher level. That would be neat. Despite her deflection, she appears to com contemplate the question for a moment. I guess I don't really know. Some new experiences would be a start, then maybe I'll have a better idea. Three years now, and I still feel like something is... Missing, I guess. Maybe I want to have that carefree feeling again. Or maybe I just want new experiences. I sound ridiculous, like I'm having a midlife, a midlife crisis or something. Silly me. How about you, Yumiko? Do you miss your own your hometown? No. <laughs> can't say that I do. Well, I can't blame you. New Elva City is a lot of fun too. Yidong peeks at her phone on the table. Oh no, I forgot I have a meeting with Mr. CEO in five minutes. Four minutes now. She grabs her things in a hurry and pops up from her seat. I love to keep talking, but I gotta run. Sorry, Yumiko. No experiences. I think I've had enough of those for a lifetime so far. Yep. Yeah. And it's probably all a simulation. Hey, you. You guys totally ruined my date yesterday. I don't want to serve you. Arms crossed and nose pointed in the air. I can never tell if Jay's actually serious when she acts like this. Uh... Hmm. Let's apologize. I feel like, one way or another, that's just the right move. Sorry, that was wrong of me. Jay's, Jay's expression softens ever so slightly. It's whatever. Just stop being so weird about it. I didn't realize you were a songwriter. <laughs> I'll have you know that I have many hidden talents. Like what? Uh, bartending, being cute and generally likable. Uh, <laughs> I certainly haven't found those to be true so far. Nobody asked you. She turns around in a huff, as she usually does. I don't consider myself a real songwriter. That sounds too pretentious. I just write whatever comes to mind. Is that your dream? To be a songwriter? Why the hell are you so nosy? Do you want to drink or not? I thought you weren't going to serve me. Ugh, you're so... Ugh. She starts cobbling together an alcoholic contraption, pouring out of multiple bottles at a time. Jay slides over a drink served in what looks to be a glass flower vase, a brilliant blue hue that seems to glow even in this dimly lit bar. Silver flakes flow freely, suspended in the boozy aquarium. Is this safe to drink? Do you think I like? Do you think I try to kill you? I refuse to answer the question. What's it called? I can't tell you. The boss will yell at me because it's inappropriate. But it's my signature drink. And the silver flakes are these edible? That's the best part. Silver is my favorite color. Ignoring the fact that she didn't answer my question, I take a whiff of the aqua blue liquid. This smells like pure alcohol. It's mostly just rum and vodka. That'll be $20. You're an extortionist. Dude, it's like 80% alcohol. It's a good deal. You're the worst bartender of all time. And you are the worst customer of all time. You're gonna make me hit you again. Oh. They're not that different. Jane Hedon. Jay's probably a little more mischievous. Her mind doesn't wander as much. She also seems less... Nah. Maybe I'm overthinking it. Returning home for dinner, I glimpse what must be half a dozen silver shopping bags on the front steps. Delivery? No, these bags look like someone just brought them from the store. As I lean forward to carefully expect them, I can hear someone rumbling down the stairs. Oh, it's you! You almost hit me in the face with a door! Oh, sorry, friend. She picks up three of the shopping bags, awkwardly attempting to balance them while holding the door open with her leg. Yumiko, a little help. Uh, what'd you even buy? This is a ton of stuff. Just doing some retail therapy. 
Some tops, shoes, you know the drill. I... I don't, but okay. Dropping her bags gently on the floor, I look around Hye Dong's room. Rosy pink walls are lined with trendy white and antique gold furniture pieces. Fittingly stylish for a young adult, I guess. Don't look! It's a mess! Ignoring her, ignoring her request, I notice a few Polaroids clipped to the wall, hanging by a string. Curious, but not wanting to intrude. Should I stay, or should I go? Ask about her photos, leave. Let's ask, why not? What are those pictures of? Oh, just some old friends. Photos of Hye Dong and others eating together, going on vacation, laughing together. Lots of good memories, it looks like. Noting the date on some of these, it looks like they were from our middle school or high school days. Your friends growing up? Yep, my best friend from the good old days. She sighs softly as she tosses her new clothes onto the bed. Shame I don't get to see them much anymore. Why's that? Well, I don't live in my hometown anymore. Do you ever go back to, you know, reconnect? Even if I wanted to, they wouldn't be around. Everyone's gone their own separate ways. Part of growing up, I guess. Sometimes you don't realize you're having the time of your life until it's over. That's why I always try to take photos of my happiest moments. A rare austere moment from Hei Dong. I struggle to find the words to console her, but I know how she feels. Growing up doesn't always mean... Growing up doesn't always have to mean growing apart. She perks up a little upon hearing my words. You think so? I hope you're right. I like the friends I have now, so let's stay together. Anyway, I gotta wash up and go to bed now, Yumiko. Thanks for helping me out. Bed? It's 8pm. I need my beauty sleep. She gently nudges me out of the room. Thanks for making me feel better, Yumiko. Day 17. We are trucking along, baby. Third, fourth, fifth, C major, E major. <sighs> this is so boring. Music theory is like homework. I thought making music was supposed to be free and spiritual and all that. This is just like my elementary school math homework. Oh well, at least I'm treated to this relaxing piano melody while I grind away at it. She stopped. She looks down at the keyboard. Her right hand trembles slightly as she slides it off the ivory keys and onto the bench. Yumiko? Yeah? Wanna go somewhere? Uh, where? Let's get coffee. Sometimes it feels like there's only one coffee shop in this entire city. Yuzhan quietly sips on her coffee, staring out the window while place, placidly admiring the street view. So what's wrong? What do you mean? You're the last person I'd expect to sneak out in the middle of class. What's going on? Her eyes wander while taking a deep swig from her cup. I'm just having a hard time focusing lately. Just tired, I guess. Not a big deal. Are you not sleeping enough? I'm fine, don't worry. I'm sure you can handle it. I want to help, Yu Zhang. Come on. I just want to help. Yu Zhang's brow furrows slightly. I'm able to handle myself. I appreciate the concern, though. Doesn't sound like she was really thankful. Whoops. She holds the cup in both hands, fingers restlessly fidgeting with the paper sleeve. Although, I'm not so sure these days anymore. Sure about what? It's nothing. I'm just rambling. It looks like she's doubting herself a little. That's why I'm around. Come on, B. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm around, right? To be there for you if things go bad. I may not be great at piano, but at the very least I can be a good friend. Yuzhong? Her eyes are closed. She seriously fell asleep on me. Her eyelashes flutter as she stirs. Slowly awakening before emitting a slight yawn. Sorry, did I fall asleep? Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm just really tired these days. We, well, all the time. You're right, I should go to bed earlier. Well, this was a good break from class. Shall we go back? Sure. She picks her phone up from the table, checking the time. Oh, looks like class is about to end. I guess there's no reason to go back at this point. She stands up. Are you going home? I have another class after this. You? Me too. I'll see you tomorrow, I guess. Thanks for coming out with me. She begins to walk away. You, Jean? She stops and turns back. Hmm? Can we do this again sometime? Hang out, that is. Hmm? With you? 
I don't know about that. She giggles. Oh, I said that. Okay, that. <laughs> I don't know about that. She giggles. There you go. Just kidding. Of course we can. Bye, Yumiko. She has some sort of sense of humor after all. Ugh. That was a little bit awkward. Because, <laughs> like, she was giving off such a, such a depressing mood and then it's like, cracks a joke. I, it's hard to read that. This character. Hmm. I think she'll be the main character. Oh yeah, that's a good design. I'm thinking dark hair with casual style. Strong personality. General... General-like. I also kind of wanted to have fire hands. Is that too crazy? Fiery hands? I'll think about it. Chang flips through her sketchbook of designs, with recurring characters that have clearly evolved and grown with years of practice. It's apparent that she's had these ideas floating around in her head for a long time now. Maybe one of those characters with a sad backstory? An orphan street urchin or something. Or is that too, sh or is that too cliche? An orphan urchin, or orphan street urchin or something. Hmm. Is that too cliche? I feel like cliche would be more like... I mean, like, it's, it's fairly cliche, but it's not too bad if you're gonna, like, compare it to something along the lines of, like, oh, yo, my, my parents died or something like that, you know? I feel like Street Urchin is actually pretty good, depending on the character you're trying to build. So it sounds good to me. Really? You think so? Yeah, it's your story. I think you should, I think you should just be confident in it. Maybe you're right. I'll write it down. The self-doubt is likely the reason it's taken her years to put this story onto paper. The backstory is really important for stories, I think. It gives them a motivation. It makes them feel real, I guess. Anyway, how's your drawing coming along? It's unusual for Chang to talk this much about anything. I feel like I'm giving her too fast of a voice. I can't say it's a bad thing. It's a refreshing change. I don't know how you guys deal with this. There are so many assignments every day. You just have to be prodigy like me, I guess. Truly a master of deadpan delivery. She glances over at my paper. You're getting better, at least. Oh, thanks. I guess I'm learning from the prodigy herself. She chuckles as she goes back to sketching. There's a vibrating noise that seems to be emanating from Chang's pocket. Are you going to get that? She rolls her eyes and begrudgingly pulls her cell phone out. Briefly looks at the caller ID and casually tosses the phone onto the ground beside her. Who is that? No one. Dang, three missed calls. I enter the kitchen to see Kay standing in front of the open fridge, carefully placing wrapped bowls inside. A small silver purse dangles off her left shoulder. Heading out? Off to work again? Another lovely day. She closes the fridge and smiles at me before walking towards the door. Part of me wants to say something more before she leaves. I could stop by to keep you company. I could stop by, keep company. She chuckles. That's alright, Yumiko. Sometimes even I need to be alone with my thoughts. Yeah, I get it. Don't worry. If you're lonely, you can always text me. I didn't mean to sound so needy. She stops in the doorway. When I come back... Yeah? I think it would be fun to go do something together. All of us. Yeah, that would be fun, I think. I'll make it happen. Pinky promise. See you later, Yumiko. That is a red flag if I've ever fucking heard one. What are you feeling? That is a red fucking flag, dude. Red carpet. Oh my god, dude. I mean, really? Oh, when we get back, let's all go do something really fun together after this slightly depressing episode. Another day of spreadsheets while Heidong sits next to me, nonchalantly flipping through pictures on her phone. Are you an animal person, Yumiko? That came out of nowhere. I've been thinking about it a lot lately. Anyway, do you like them? Dogs or cats? I like dogs. Thank goodness you have taste. I'm glad you're a person of culture. I want a dog. This one. She hands me her phone. There's a picture of a... What is that? It looks like a hairless mole. Isn't it cute? Uh... I think it's cute. I'm gonna adopt a dog one day. Hopefully soon. Maybe I'll even get two. Or three. 
I'll be the supreme dog mom. I'm just going to go to back. I'm just going to go back to work. Yumiko, look, look. This one's even cuter. Uh. <laughs> uh just another day with Hudong. Hudong. Business is slow today. You can go home early, Jay. Oh, okay. Don't worry, I'll still pay ya. Gotta take care of my favorite bartender, after all. Thanks, boss. Did you hear him? He saw- He said- Did you hear him? He said I'm the best bartender. You're the only bartender. It's still true. That also makes you the worst bartender. You are such a little- Why are you still following me around, anyway? I'm off the clock and I don't want to see your face. I thought you were going home. Jay stands still in the middle of the street, listlessly gazing at her phone. After a few minutes of swiping around at her phone, she lets out a gentle sigh and puts it back into her pocket. Ugh, I don't have any plans, but I don't just want to sit at home either. Time to tease her again. So, where's Gray? Her eyes narrow and, bur and brows furrow as she senses my sarcasm. What? He's probably, like, busy with recording or something. I don't know. Why are you asking me? I thought you would know. You guys are dating, right? But I don't... Shut up! This could be a good time to learn more about their relationship. Do I even want to know, though? Have you kissed? How often do you see each other? Nothing to say. What do you usually do together? Oh, this is dangerous territory, man. This is real dangerous territory. Let's see. How often do you see each other? Uh, I... Not... I don't know, not that often. He's busy and we're still trying to get that contract figured out. I'm never prepared for Jay's rare moments of vulnerability, although it seems like they're becoming more common recently. It's like being around a different person entirely. This could be a good time to learn more about their relationship. Do I even want to know though? Uh, what do you usually do together? Stuff. What kind of stuff? You were there last time, you should know. God, you're so nosy. She seems more like the usual Jay. Her verbal abuse is almost comforting at this point. Do I have Stockholm Syndrome? This could be a good time to learn. Okay, yeah, yeah. I already asked that. Stop what kind of stuff. Uh, have you kissed? Jay's face instantly t turns a severely bright red. That's none of your business. What? Have you done more than that? You idiot. Ow. That hurts. How are you just going to assault me in public like that? You you deserve it, you ass. Wait, what'd she say? Uh, you're literally the worst. Yeah, dating an idol sounds crazy. Can't imagine that ever happening, though. It's going to happen. Just you wait. How is it going to happen? Tell me. Uh, I... I'll make it work. Uh-huh. Why is this all about me, anyway? What's going on in your love life? Where's Dong Dong? What do you mean? In one quick motion, she definitely swipes my phone from her pocket. What the hell? Are, what the hell? Are you some kind of street rat or something? How did you just... I told you I have many talents. Let me see. Kye Dong, Kye Dong. I reach over to grab my phone, but Jay turns away. Give it back. No. I reach towards her right, causing her to turn left. Seeing an opening, I use my superior arm length to snatch the phone out of her hands from the left. What the? What is this? Are you trying to hug me, you goddamn pervert? What? No, I'm grabbing my... Ah, don't touch me! I don't want to touch you if I don't have to, you short-armed dwarf. <laughs> dwarf? You son of a... She ducks around and shuffles a few steps away. I look down at my phone. <laughs> Sorry, that was Jay. Lol, you guys are so silly. I'm missing out. Where are you, anyway? I was taking a nap. Now, if excuse me, I'm going to go back to doing that. Zzz. <laughs> Jay I was helping you confess your love What? You can't just abuse a girl like that Maybe if you weren't so small you could defend yourself Why you <laughs> Get back here <laughs> Oh that's so great Oh man Thoroughly exhausted after chasing each other around like little kids all evening We finally returned home You're tougher than I expected Yumiko you only cried once. I didn't cry. You cried. That's that's not important. And it never happened. Anyway, I... Oh, you two are finally home. 
Come in, dinner, dinner is getting cold. I mean, like, I'm Chang Gang, right? But then there's also Ye Dong, but then there's Yu Zhong, but then there's Kelso K, and then there's, um, J, and, ah. Did you see the docs I sent you today? Yes, you sent me like 20 pictures a day when I'm sleeping. You know when I'm awake. But it's boring at work. Yumiko doesn't, doesn't, ugh, Yumiko doesn't entertain me enough. Anyway, some of them are cute, but that weird hairless looking one? No thanks. What? That one was my favorite! My first, my first choice when I get a dog. Ridiculous! A smaller dog is cuter. And what's the fun if it's not fluffy too? That's like half of the cute factor. You're absurd. And who names their dog Cum Cum? That almost sounds like something. Alright, it's settled down you two. Also, I want to see. The three of them continue to squabble pulling Kay into their bickering by asking her which breed of dog she finds cutest. I decide this is a good time to slink back to my room unnoticed. Man, am I tired. <laughs> I wonder what cum cum sounds like, huh? I just, pff, I just can't put my finger on it. Making my way into the classroom, it looks like Yu Zhang is taking notes in one of the music theory notebooks. Hopefully she's doing it for me. Because, if I, because I swear, if I have to spend another day on that stuff, I'm going to... F Good morning, Yumiko. Her unusually bubbly greeting takes me by surprise. Did she add more work to the book? I'm gonna lose it. How's the music theory going? I love it so much, sarcastically. I love it so much. It's my favorite thing in the world. I lay awake at night fantasizing about music theory. Yizhang bursts into laughter and playfully punches my shoulder. <laughs> You're funny. Anyway, I made some notes for you so you can focus on your duet. Thanks. I think, I think that's the first time she's ever initiated any sort of contact. Well, I'm going to get back to the piano. Let me know if you have any questions. I can help. There are only a few days before the semester ends, so make sure you do it. Yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, my favorite couple. I mean, my favorite pairing. I mean, teacher. Wait, no, that's me. Anyway, Yumiko, how are your assignments going? I need them by the end of the semester. I feel like she just said this to me a few days ago. Sometimes the, the teacher feels like an NPC in a video game, but like, not a new one, but one from over a decade ago. How much of my grade are these theory assignments worth? I motion toward the towering stack of notebooks and worksheets beside me. She furrows her brow in thought while flipping through one of her many binders. Music theory work, hmm. 10%? Is that right? Yep. <laughs> that should take care of it. <laughs> Ten all, all that work for 10% of your grade. <laughs> that shoulder should be further down. Think of the trapezius muscles and get a gentle uh, and get a gentle slope down. Show me an example. Flip your hair back and show off that neckline. Keep dreaming, stupid. It was worth a try. Lost by the wayside was the other day's awkward moment. I didn't want to pry into Chang's personal life, but my thoughts couldn't help but wander. I know Chang is a loner. And I know she's a masterclass artist compared to me. But even after knowing each other for a few weeks, I realize I don't really know anything about her. At least, not anything more than the other students in our class would. I know she loves comics, and she's clearly done a lot of research on how to craft a good story. She doesn't seem to have much interest, interest in talking about herself, but maybe with a little prodding she would open up a little. She's clearly capable of going into details about things she's passionate about. Hey Chang. What? As usual, she responds indifferently without even looking away from her sketchbook. Where are you from? She furrows her brow and gr briefly glares disapprovingly before continuing her work. Don't want to tell me? Nope. Why not? Why should I? You've been told that friendships are built on mutual understanding and- Oh, I've been told that friendships are built on mutual understanding and respect. <laughs> what is that from? What is that? From a movie? Are you a robot? And you're not my friend. I'm the only one who hangs out with you. What else would I be? You go first. I lived alone in a small apartment with no friends, family, or job. I picked up a phone I found on the ground and I woke up here. Chang stops drawing and looks over at me. There, now it's your turn. Is that some sort of joke? No, it's what happened. Why would I believe that? You don't have to believe me. I know I wouldn't either. Cheng pauses for a moment as if she's trying to decide whether to believe me or not. 
Looks like she's going back to drawing. Oh well, I tried. I feel like that, that right there might have... I feel like uh, earlier if I would have told Hyedong a fake story, then th I would have told that fake story to Chang, I feel like. That would be a pretty cool backstory for a comic character. I'll have to remember that. I've been to a lot of places. This is my f third school in four years. I've spent the longest time at this one so far, though. Why did you move so often? Just bad situations, I guess. How bad? It's not important. Was it a family thing? Hey, your drawing is off. Let me help you with that. Uh, looks like we made some progress today, at least. Building her backstory one line at a time. Ah. Uh, another night alone. Kay's off to work, and I'm trying to keep busy. Shouldn't she be sleeping? Wait, what are you doing here? I wanted to go for a walk or something. She walks up beside me. What's this? Uh, music theory. You should work on your art skills instead. What am I going to do if you fail the class? I think music suits me better. Oh! <sighs> oh, fuck. This is like a deciding moment. I feel like why would you miss me is like more of a neutral answer, but it still leans towards Chang. I'm gonna go with that. Oh, maybe you should just go with your right, but at the same time, like I wanna get to know more about Yu Zhang and what she what her whole situation is. Because even with Chang, I don't know what's going on. I, I feel like we need to keep it neutral for now, as neutral as we possibly can. Why? Would you miss me? She scoffs with a slight chuckle. <laughs> That's a good one. You didn't answer. Shut up. I pull out my sketchbook. She points at some areas that could be improved, but generally seems a little less flippant than usual. She moves the chair next to mine and sits beside me. Texting other girls? Good joke. I was just talking to Kay. She wants me to ask everyone if they'd like to do something together when she comes back. Hmm. I don't know what, though. She didn't say. What would I... Why would I do that when I have everything I could ever want right here in this house? Her words drip with sarcasm. Even a brooding artist like you must enjoy new experiences once in a while, right? She hops off the chair. I'll think about it. See ya. Night. I guess it would be nice for everyone to get together. I don't think that's happened in the entire time I've been here. It's been a long time since I felt like I belonged somewhere. All right, boys, that's going to end it off for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. We are making some progress with Chang. We're making some progress with Jay. We are making progress with Yudong and... What's the fucking girl's name? Yuzhong. We're making progress with all of them. But uh, I, I, I have a feeling that things are starting to build up now. I have a feeling we might be, uh, be heading towards the climax. But anyways, guys, that's going to be it for this time. I hope you enjoyed, and if you did, please leave a like on the video. I look forward to the review video, not only the review video, but also the rest of this series coming out hopefully sometime soon. And I'll see you guys next time. Don't rain.